a symbol thing? Is it three? Yeah, it's three. It's a yeah, symbol. Yeah. <laughs> Held him hostage. He's fine, though. Mm. Every nut bolt, guys. Every single nut and bolt. Bolt and nut. So I wanted to hop on here right before the video begins and talk about our brand new shirt drop. If you guys missed it in the last video, we talked about taking everything off our website to start bringing in new product and that is starting now. So we have our new crew cap t-shirt. This thing came out absolutely awesome. You can see I'm repping right now. I'm super hyped for the way this thing came out. So one-off edition. It's only gonna be available for a limited time. You can check it out right here at 909speedcompany.com. I'll have a link on the screen as well as down in the description. It'll also be the top pinned comment. And this shirt will not have nearly as long of a shelf life as the other ones did. And it's a super killer t-shirt. I'm super stoked with it. And coming into summer we even decided to put this on a tank top for you guys so our first crew cap t-shirts now live on the website definitely go ahead and check it out the support from this apparel goes a long way and with that being said let's get back into the video all right guys getting back into the swing of things with the crew cap got this thing freshly painted in the last video with my buddy marcello and dave got myself a fresh haircut my gift from hope we're ready to get jamming on this thing so uh earlier today i went ahead and i separated this in the last video you saw that i could not get these apart brought it over to my buddy adam's house you can see we may have lit them on fire just a tee wee bit put them in a 30 ton press max the press and they exploded in our face and now they're in two pieces so we can separate these and I'll be getting the kingpin part number because this is a 1.054 inch kingpin. So it's basically a one inch kingpin for the 350 because this is a much larger beam than a normal one would be. So, you know, if you look at this thing and you go under your truck, it's like the regular 7 8s on my truck. You can see just how much tinier that thing is uh, versus this thing. This thing's nice and she's thick. She's a big, thick boy. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and clean this thing up with a needler gun. Same thing. This is essentially your before and after right here. So we go ahead and get these ones done, the beams done. And we're getting everything ready to be painted. So we're going to do a custom color on this, on all the suspension pieces, and then do a black everywhere else so it should be pretty fun let's get into it
Okay, what's the symbol thing? Is it three? I think it was three, yeah. Yeah, it's three. It's a man, it's symbol. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, did he fix it? We will see. <laughs> Why is it idling like that now? That's gonna sound like a hog ass cam in it, you know? Oh, big hog ass cam guy. Oh, yeah. Big short motor guy. So, is it just always run that crappy? I guess. Nice. I bet you that line that broke is probably has something to do with it. Yeah, like, maybe. The pattern doesn't crack in. It's 2.20 in the morning. I held him hostage. He's fine though. Look at that. No light. <laughs> Just typical things at 2 in the morning. <laughs> He's having a great time. He's fine. So, Marcelo, me, and well, Franco was working on his little whatever that cube was, the uh, oil leak on wheels, and uh, we got everything ready for paint. So, everything's pretty much sanded as good as it needs to be. Uh, I should really in invest in a sandblasting cabinet. I think that would be a valid use of our time. I think so. Great time. <laughs> yeah, look at how happy he was to sand everything. Hours and hours. <laughs> so now we're gonna load all this into the old work truck and uh, go over to Dave's, get all the stuff sprayed. So, really bitching color. Cannot wait to show you guys the color we're gonna go on this stuff. A lot of it is gonna be black, but there is a really cool accent color. So, let's load this up, get over to Dave's. All right, guys, getting over to Dave's, getting jamming away. Got all the parts here, gonna see some clear on those. We got pretty much everything laid out, prepped, just gotta ask them some stuff, start putting some color on it. So, Dave's going ahead and Shooting some clear on his crew cab. Check this thing out. Looks super nice. Getting it all dialed in. <gasps> Damn, we're gonna paint this thing? That's crazy. Yep. <laughs> Painting her up. Yeah. So, keeping the original paint. Scuffed it up. Gonna go ahead and clear coat it and protect it. This is the same one that's got the Gen 3 with the uh, the Pro Charger on it. This is a Gen 3, yeah? Gen 3. Yeah, Gen 3. You can see the off <laughs> the blow right here. Nice. And Dave's always got cool stuff in here. So he's got his fridge, the 60 up there, the GC500 motor. I think this is a 58 or 9 or 60, one of the two. I think it's a 59. And then he's got this Dodge with a full Crown Vic clip. Thing's badass. Look at the Detroits on the back of this thing. I think these are Detroits. Just looks tough, man. Badass. And this thing, dude. Suicide door, bro. All right, jamming over here to Dave's, gonna spray this stuff. I'm stoked, look at how much better this stuff looks. So, we're gonna start out with the gold. If I run over here before he goes crazy, show you guys this color. Oh yeah, let me get a light on this. Ooh yeah. Yeah, this is good. So it looks kinda orange, we gotta mix it, but you can see when it's mixed. It's a more of a yellowish gold for sure, but it definitely looks pretty sweet, so we're gonna see how it covers. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a pretty red color. It looks very orange on camera. It's not. We're going to have to color grade it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So, I don't know. I was hoping it's not too bronze is really what I was looking for because my F100 has bronze beams. We're doing the gold this time, so we'll see how it lays, but man, it is good. Oh, yeah, that stuff covers good, too. The nice thing about what we're doing, being this is a lot of suspension stuff, we just do an etch on it and just throwing a thin coat of base on it. You don't usually have any problems with it chipping or doing anything too crazy, so just run it. See how it comes out. Hopefully good, hopefully good. It's expensive.
I'm voluntarily ruining this camera lens just to film these clips. So please like the video. <laughs> Outside. But we've got all the parts sprayed, they're all cleared. Look at all, everything looks brand new. I mean, that is killer. So, base coat, clear coat, definitely the way to go. I've kind of done a little bit of both, done some single stage. My Lincoln is single stage. I painted that in Sean's backyard, it came out great. This is all base coat. The nice thing about base is you can kind of use the base as its own primer. And then, uh, on stuff like this comes out really, really good. But we definitely should have cleaned these up, chopped these off, but whatever, you don't want to notice it. You can not you can barely even see up on that part, but man, this color looks sweet. Franklin's welds on the bungs look good. All the way around. Yeah, there we go, now you can really see that metallic. Looks good. It's got three coats of clear, make two or three coats of base. Caliper brackets came out freaking sweet. And the Dayton dual piston calipers, the original calipers. These things look badass. Went ahead and ran a tape line on them real quick so the seals are still good. And they are, surprisingly. And then these beams, you can see where we bent them. They came out really good. I'm super hyped to this. This is gonna look like jewelry under this truck. But yeah, my bushings aren't in the greatest shape, but and these are being a 350 beam. They're a huge knuckle on the end. I mean, look at how much bigger this beam end is than a normal, normal one of these. And then this bushing is a special size and you have to order it in their special order part. So these, they might look that bad, look bad, but they really don't have any play in them. They're still in good, good enough shape to where I'd be okay with putting them back on the truck. Cause I know longer term, we are gonna end up probably chopping the end off and pushing the beam out two inches. Uh, so we'll end up putting a heim on it anyways and repainting the beam again. But for right now, this looks very, very good. Yeah, not too bad. So we're gonna let this stuff dry and I will get it back to the shop and we'll start assembly everything. And uh, hopefully this thing comes together pretty quick. Be it. But we even did the steering. Because the steering comes with this really crappy black coating. Went ahead and shot it. It looks way better now. And uh, the stuff underneath the truck is just gonna look so nice when it's all together. So you can just see it all. But yeah, it's working sweet. Nice. Alrighty, back in the shop, getting to work, and uh, very hard at work, and uh, we got everything painted over here, so check this out. So we're working on EFI right now, we'll get into that in a separate little video, but all the suspension is painted. Dave did an amazing job. I'm incredibly thankful of Dave. Go check his stuff out right here, I'll put the tag up. Dude's an awesome painter, very talented, and a really, really good friend, and I really do appreciate him taking the time to spray this stuff. And massive shout out to this guy getting down and dirty cleaning everything. Yeah, good job, yeah. buddy. Yeah, you had so much fun, didn't I you? Know. Look at that big fake smile. He's so happy. Yeah. So everything is nice and gold now. Same color as all the stuff we done on the F100's engine. We put on the suspension for this truck. So it's kind of like a black and gold theme. Uh, everything on this is base coat clear. And it was one of those things where realistically, like I was saying before, where, you know, kind of try to get away from spray paint. Spray paint is good. It's cheap. But nowadays with everything being so expensive already, you might as well spend maybe 20 bucks more to get a quart or a half gallon of base and then just buy a gallon of clear and then whatever base you run you'll have a clear to use you can clear it and this stuff is it just comes out so much cleaner so much better and the outcome is just well worth the work and I mean the results speak for yourself I mean look at these rusty Dayton calipers these things are now look brand new all of the rusty components that were in the steering and all the suspension pieces well, even down to the bolts, everything looks brand new, including the box. So I would highly recommend it. I think this stuff came out amazing. And we did get a new chrome bumper that came off of a parts truck that I did buy. Which I'll show in a separate video. It's just a lot. A lot has been happening the last couple of weeks. I bought another truck. We're going to do a restoration on, but it came with a bunch of badass parts that I'm going to steal from my crew cab because, sorry, single cab crew cab. There's a hierarchy here. Um, and one of the things it came with was a chrome bumper that was chromed like 10 years ago and it looks perfect. So we are definitely going to be putting that on the crew cab. Uh, and then I'm just going to slowly start assembling all this. So we're going to start hanging the beams and the radius arm get that stuff underneath the truck so we have something to trip over and yeah. you're gonna put that fuel line in that truck I'm trying 
trying. Don't zoom in on me. I'm, oh, good idea. He loves the close-ups. No, I don't. He loves the close-ups, man. <laughs> no. You heard it work? Oh yeah, this is the what I do best. Yeah. Oh, oh there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> Barb! <laughs> Super, super good. I'm very happy with that. So, next thing you can see, I slid the kingpin in. It does fit in the beam. Now I need to get it to fit in the spindle. So if I go over here, I've got everything kind of set out on a bench. Uh, this is the part number that I used for the kingpin kit for a 1.054 inch kingpin. This is the kingpin that's in mine. I have an F350 beam. I have a huge set of beams. Keep that in mind. I think I talked about this a little bit previously, but the beam on my truck, because it's a crew cap, is huge. Uh, it's a lot bigger than a standard beam, so you might not have the same one that I do, but measure your kingpin with a caliper, and you'll see that it says 0154 on it, wherever the hell my caliper went. Yeah, 0154 right there, or 1054. So that's the kingpin that's in this thing. Uh, and so it comes with a set of bushings, and I'm gonna need to ream these out, most likely because you can see, it doesn't quite slip over the end very well. It's like tight for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and press these bushings in and I got an adjustable reamer. You can grab these things on Amazon. This one specifically goes from 15 sixteenths all the way up to an inch and a sixteenth, which is perfect for the range that we need. And I'll be able to slip this thing in, adjust it outward, and then cut it to according size uh, so this thing will fit properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and press these things in, get these guys installed, and then basically run the reamer through it. And once those are good and the kingpin slides through, we should be able to assemble the front of the truck. And this kit does come with all of our grease fittings and the caps and the bushings that do go on this, as well as the shims, so I can shim the thing too. So if you've never gotten kingpins on these trucks, it's kind of a pain, it's a big job. It requires a lot of heavy tooling, like a 30 ton press just to separate them sometimes, which is what we had to do. But putting it back together is usually a relatively simple process. You just have to have the right tools. If you have no specialty machinery tool, like a reamer or anything like this, you might have a rough time getting this thing together. So your alternative is basically taking your ID measurements, taking that to a machine shop, putting the whole thing together, and then giving them your spindle and or beam and telling them to ream it out to the kingpin and bring your kingpin with them. As long as you have a good machine shop that doesn't suck, you should be fine. But I'm gonna do it myself because I do have some of the tooling and uh, we'll see how this goes.
front end is coming together. It looks pretty good. Got the spindles all done. These things are nice and snug and not loose. Very good. Very happy with that. And uh, as it drives down the road, everything will kind of settle in. I haven't greased these yet. Still got to run a grease gun through them and then everything will loosen up a little bit. But yeah, it's uh, it's solid. So I'm going to start running the brake system on it. I'm going to put the caliper brackets on and then do our brake rotors, our calipers, and then build that system. And then our last thing to throw in is our steering, which we have everything mocked up over here. Alex went ahead and got everything lined up from the old stuff to the new. So all we got to do is just drop it all in. So got a couple more puzzle pieces to do. Then I can put this thing on the ground. I'm starting to rent all the sniper stuff, which I'll have a separate video on. Got Lang and Marcelo over there. They're helping do all the sniper EFI stuff. And then I got to go back over this engine and wrap up this thing so we can put it in the truck tomorrow. And yeah, just a million things going on at once. So trying to make it all happen, trying to do it all efficiently, trying not to destroy my shop in the process and it's not working. And then you got a three-year-old over there playing with a bunch of exhaust tubing. But all right, well, let's keep going. We're almost there. I'm gonna try to get this thing on the ground. All right, you guys got the front end dialed up. Got a little whatever that is under there doing stuff under there. Man, that looks sick. Look at how good it looks. It's so extra and I love it. Oh yeah, this is so rad. Came out exactly the way that I envisioned. The Dayton's. Oh yeah, baby. See, it's like Franklin's truck, except this is all dirty now. Yeah, the purple ones. And he actually uses these. <laughs> we'll see how long this thing stays clean for, but. It's got disc brakes now, it's sick. Hell yeah. All the way down to the hardware on top. Man, it just looks good. Just, mmm, mmm, mmm. Very good. And uh, I painted my tranny up pretty good. Thanks, buddy. Bruce Jenner's yeah. looking mint. Oh yeah? Professional Bruce. You missed all of it, guys. It's okay. All look. of it. Look, it I'll, looked I'll, like garbage. Look, I'll put it before, and then there's the after. Look, see? Brand new. It's just that easy. Oh, it's so good, dude. I love it. Okay. Don't drive it in the dirt. Well, that's no fun. I ain't got these big old tires going to dirt for nothing. Just like that, the front of this thing is all buttoned up. It's all done and it looks absolutely 
phenomenal. Look at that setup. I am so stoked with the way this came out. Base coat clear looks so amazing on these frames. You know, it doesn't take a crazy amount. You just gotta prep them, clean them. And these things come out absolutely killer when they're done. Oh my goodness. I can't even keep focus on it because of how nice this thing looks. You can see me in the reflection like perfectly. And I haven't cut or polished anything. No wet sanding, it's straight off the gun. There's no need for any of that. The color on the beams, oh my gosh. The calipers, all the hardware in there. Every nut and bolt, guys. Every single nut and bolt. They've all been done. And it's sweet, so. Very, very happy with this. Definitely taking some time to document it because I know it probably won't ever look this good again. You can see the calipers through the wheels. They look good, you get a light on them. These things in the sunlight when they poke through. Ooh yeah, these things are gonna look good. Yeah, that's sweet. On the bead locks. Just looks good, you know? Very happy. Super, super thankful my buddy Dave for spraying this stuff. Super, super thankful for Marcella for helping me out. I appreciate it, buddy. Couldn't do it without those guys. And this thing looks absolutely phenomenal, so. Really gonna focus on getting the engine. The engine is over there. I wish I could show it to you, but man, they go together so well. The engine matches this setup perfectly. Everything's gonna go in. It's gonna look absolutely phenomenal. So the next video is to see the entire engine of this thing go together and hopefully go in the truck. So super, super stoked. Hope you guys went in to enjoy today's video, learn a thing or two. Like I said, try to get away from spray paint, get into the base coat, clear coat, or just spray paint out of a gun. If it's single stage and you're learning, it's well worth the talent and the skill once you have the equipment and you understand how to do it. The outcome speaks for itself. It's so much nicer than spray paint and the paint goes a lot further. So we take a quart, little baby quart. All the gold is a quart. And we're not even halfway through that quart yet for reference. And that quart was about hundred bucks so that's a metallic gold so you can do base colors like glossy colors from the $50 range which realistically it's four cans of spray paint nowadays so might as well try it but by the way hope you guys wanted to enjoy it drop a like on the video if you didn't grab the merchandise at 909speedcompany.com I will see you guys in the next one with the crew cab later guys